You know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and here to prove it today is my son Sam, who is an excellent cook. And you know what, you would be too if you learned how to cook these dishes, these two simple sautés that he has perfected. First, a favorite from Sam's college years, buttermilk fried pork chops. So tender and tasty, no wonder he made them all the time. Then Sam is joining me to make another sauté that's so good it's destined to replace the pork chops. Sautéed lemon chicken with capers. And on Ask Sarah, we'll answer viewers' questions about vegetables. So you're ready to cook? Yeah. You know, maybe you'll teach me something this time. Maybe. I'm Sarah Moulton. That's all coming up on Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Funding provided by... Subaru builds vehicles like the versatile Subaru Forester with symmetrical all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo room. A recipe made for whatever the day brings. Subaru, a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Family owned and Indiana grown, Maple Leaf Farms is a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Providing a variety of duck products for home kitchens, Maple Leaf Farms duck helps inspire culinary adventures everywhere. Maple Leaf Farms. And thanks to the generous support of The inspiration for this recipe comes from southern fried chicken. However, I'm not making chicken. I'm making pork. This is the secret ingredient, buttermilk. What does the buttermilk do? It makes it really moist and juicy and yummy. So I am making buttermilk fried pork chops, and it's actually buttermilk soaked fried pork chops. And by the way, they aren't fried. But here's our marinade. We're starting with one cup of buttermilk, which is the equivalent in fat content of either skim milk or 1%. Very low cal, but it's got that rich, thick texture. If you can't find buttermilk, which you can increasingly, I'm gonna mince some garlic here, um, just take one cup of milk, combine it with a tablespoon of either vinegar or lemon, fresh lemon juice, and let it sit, you know, for, I don't know, half an hour, and it will sort of become, get the properties of buttermilk, meaning it will be um, a good tenderizer. Dairy is a good tenderizer anyway, but buttermilk has got the double whammy of having the acid and the milk. So in goes our garlic, and then we're gonna add some hot sauce, a teaspoon. It can be whatever hot sauce you like. And then a half a teaspoon of salt. I used to whisk this together but I get lazier by the second, so instead I smush it up and hope that the salt dissolves. So while that sort of hangs out and the salt continues to dissolve, I'm going to pound my pork chop. Now I got those boneless pork chops about a half an inch thick, and I'm gonna pound them so they're much thinner. But in order to cut them in half, you're gonna see in a minute, I froze them for about a half an hour. This seems to be a theme here. Uh, it's just much easier to work with meat when it's cold, and it's even easier to work with it when it's slightly frozen. I'm gonna cut these two chops horizontally and I'm gonna show you how. Just get down where the meat is. Don't ever stand up here and go like that. You can see where that might go. Just go slowly, keep your hand on top, go all the way through, and there you go. Um, my favorite way of pounding is to add a little bit of water to a resealable bag. You could put a little bit of water on plastic wrap if you prefer to do that. This helps the meat to not shred when you're pounding it. I'm gonna pound the meat to an eighth of an inch thickness and the rolling pin is my weapon of choice. And now it's gonna cook up so quickly and be wonderfully tender. But first, we've got to marinate it for a half an hour. So I'm gonna pop it into our marinade bag. And I have some in the fridge that I've already marinated for a half an hour. So now it's time to cook them. Quick rinse to my hands, and then I'm going to bread my chops. 
Breadcrumbs, the darling of chefs, we have here panko breadcrumbs. We just love them because they're so coarse and so dry and so they're so crispy on the outside. If you couldn't find panko breadcrumbs, which mostly you can these days, don't sweat it. You could just use some dried breadcrumbs. You could even use Italian breadcrumbs. I'm adding some olive oil. Now, we're not frying the pork chops, we're sauteing the pork chops. And we're gonna coat it with the breadcrumbs. My son just loves these pork chops. And it's, it's funny because after he was at college for just one semester, he decided he hated the dorm food. So he moved into an apartment with a bunch of friends and he started cooking. I was amazed. So I road tested this recipe on him and he just went wild for it. So I know that this is gonna become part of his weekly repertoire. Give these about three minutes aside or until they're crispy and brown and firm to the touch. So let me just take a little peek and see how we're doing. Tip it away if you're gonna turn this one so that when you flip it over you don't land it in the fat and have the fat splatter up at you. Oh boy, doesn't that look good. All right, well, it finishes off on the second side. I'm gonna go down and chop some parsley. Now, when you go to chop parsley, I, you know, I see people like laboriously taking off leaf by leaf. I'm like, ah, that's too much work. Did I mention how lazy I am at cooking? So I just sort of give it a haircut. Just shave it down. Leave the stems behind. Don't worry about it. And then whenever you're chopping an herb like this, smush it together instead of letting it scatter all over your board, in which case you're gonna to have to chase it. And then you will probably not have to chop it very much because it's so condensed. And actually this doesn't have to be finely chopped anyway, so I'm gonna do this once and call it a day. All right, that looks good. My pork is done. I can tell because it's firm and it's golden. So let me just put this on some paper towels to drain for half a second. And um, I'll saute up the rest. And then I'll cut my lemons. Okay, I'm ready to plate. A wonderful backdrop vegetable are sauteed apples and cabbage. Just put these extras on here. So you have to do it in batches, as I mentioned, and I'm just gonna add to my first batch. We're gonna top each one with some of my chopped parsley and a lemon, and then everybody can serve themselves and take a little lemon wedge with them to squeeze on top. Very Italian to do it with a lemon wedge. And another side of some sweet potato puree or butternut squash puree, those wonderful orange winter squashes. There you go. Okay, these buttermilk pork chops will definitely become regulars on your weekly lineup. And if my son can make them, so can you. So I have a good question from my website, sarahmoulton.com, from some viewers. To ask that question, I have Dan and Sophie from Nashville, Tennessee. Hello there, hey. Sarah. Hi. So, Nashville, Tennessee, yikes, what are you both doing there? I'm in the music business. Wow. Imagine that. Wow. So I had a career for many, many years there, and now I teach music publishing at Belmont University. Very cool. Very cool. And Sophie? Well, I'm studying animation, and I want to be a video game designer and animator when I'm older. Well, geez, you will have a job. Okay, so you two have a question. Um, we'll start with you, yeah. Dan. Well, Sarah, here we have a lot of great farmer's markets. In the summer, just everything blooms in Tennessee. It's a great climate to grow fresh vegetables in. And so 
when it, you know when you buy fresh vegetables, you want to use them that day. I think that's kind of the point, right? But I don't want to underbuy, so I tend to have leftover vegetables, even if I'm just grilling hamburgers and I want right. to uh, have tomato and lettuce. I end up with a few left over. So, what's the best way to keep them fresh for further consumption? For for a little while longer, so we don't have to waste it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we covered this. I've got a little uh, tape I'm going to show you. And I hope it will mostly answer those questions. So let's take a look at it. The whole idea of shopping locally is to use the food by cooking it that day. But what if you have some left over? Don't let it go to waste. Where your eggs should go is in the back of the fridge. It's much cooler. Next, tomatoes. Whatever you do, do not ever put a tomato in the refrigerator. Kills it, kills the texture, kills the flavor, kills everything. Just leave them on the counter, they'll be fine. And then, lettuce. What do you do with lettuce? Don't wash it till you're ready to use it, because that will make it too wet. But wrap it in a damp paper towel, and this will help to preserve the moisture that's in there and keep it trapped, and then put it in a resealable bag. There's a special place for lettuce in the fridge. It's called the crisper. You can even adjust the temperature. Okay. So what do you think? Was, was that helpful? You know what? I have always put tomatoes in the refrigerator. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so dear. this has been great. Thank you very much. That's a great tip. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Do you have any other questions now we're talking? Well, yeah. Mushrooms. I mean, if I understand right, Mushrooms are fungi. Yes, this is correct. Fungus. Yes. What is up with that? I know. Well, let's not discuss that. I don't know. There's <laughs> okay. lots of things we eat in nature that are interesting, like caviar or capers, or you, you, and you don't really understand how we got there. But we know they're yeah. good for us. They're fine. Well, so. yeah. I love yeah. them. And I love, I love shiitake mushrooms. I love them. What are the big ones you can make a whole sandwich out Portobello's. of? Portobello's. Portobello. Yeah. Oh, love yeah. portobello mushrooms. So if I'm bringing some mushrooms home, if I wash them, am I washing away some kind of great element the fresh mushrooms have? How do you, how do you prepare mushrooms? Okay, well, you really do need to wash them. Here's a little clip for you to look at that will tell you what to do. Right. So the way I was taught to clean a mushroom in cooking school was to take them one by one individually and wipe them with a damp paper towel. Well, that is fine if you have four, but what if you have 12 or 16 or a five pound box of mushrooms? Uh, uh, I am not doing that. It takes way too long. Fortunately, somewhere in there, I went and worked in a one-star restaurant in France. They taught me a different way to wash mushrooms. I'm gonna fill up a bowl with water. I'm gonna get some dry paper towels. Okay, so you fill up your bowl with water, and then you put them in, and then you go like this. Womp, 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 womp. And then you get them out. You just rub them a bit to get that extra dirt off and pat them dry. Okay, done. That was easy, right? So I like your little, what, sushi, 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 what was the yeah, little yeah. sound you make? Yeah, yeah, womp, womp, womp. Womp, womp, yeah. I don't know where that so came now, from, but yeah. I can be a mushroom womper. Yeah, yeah I, I think hey. I, that's in your future. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Okay. Well, is that it? You, are we all solved with questions? Um, actually, I've got a question. We grill a lot in the summer, and I was wondering if you had any tips on how to help my dad prepare vegetables. Grill vegetables. On the grill. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, well, first of all, you try to pick vegetables that are longer so they don't fall through the slats. So if you're <laughs> oh, doing... Oh, that. I know. <laughs> so if you're doing zucchini, you, you cut it crosswise as opposed to not in little rounds. And season them well before you put them on the grill. Don't move them until they're ready to be moved, which means that they've seared and caramelized a little bit. But very important, many people tell you to season the grill, season the vegetables, meaning oil on the vegetables, okay. not on the grill. It's, it's been great talking to you guys. Thank you so much for all these questions. These are good questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you, you Sarah, and goodbye, goodbye from Tennessee. Okay, Nashville. Bye-bye.
Today is the name of the game today. And we are making a wonderful lemon chicken dish. And I happen to be cooking with one of my favorite sous chefs and my best testers, my son, Sam. Are you up for this? Yes, ma'am. Very up for this. Well, we're making lemon chicken. And we have to start by pounding the meat. So uh, let's do that first. And uh, let me just say one tip that he already knows is when you're pounding chicken, you need to put a little water uh, on the plastic so that the chicken doesn't rip. You know, otherwise it ends up looking like lace. Yes. Okay, ready? Pound One, away. two, three. Pound away. All right, before we get too lacy. Yeah, before it's... You need a little more in there. All right, yes, yeah, Just in the middle. Wow, that's big. Okay. So the reason that we want to pound it, okay, let's put away the weapons. Put away the weapons. Is, um, so let's cut, you want to cut each of these in half this way, and then we'll park them and hose down. Sounds good. Enough. Okay. Oops, we can lose the top piece, yeah. Um, the reason we're pounding them is because then they take a lot less time to cook. And what do we like most in the house? We like the meat or do we like the sauce? Sauce. Yeah. So the thinner the meat, the more sauce you get on each piece, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. More yeah. surface area. Oh, you cut. Uh, th that's good enough. It oh, already. It's enough. Certain, did I do that? You, psh, you beat it until it ripped I, in half, ma'am. I did. I did. Okay. So um, that's the chicken. We're going to move on to the capers. Um, and so I'm clean. You're all dirty. You can hose down. Yes, ma'am. But to cut that in half first. Oh, hose down or cut things, ma'am. Come on. I know. I know. I'm being bossy as usual. So there's capers. They're the pickled bud of a Mediterranean flower. Wow. Sort fancy. of fancy. Well, sort of fancy. I want to know who was the first person who walked past that bud and said, gee, I'm going to pickle that. <laughs> you know, you can't eat them raw. I don't know why they thought of that. But at any rate, I need about two tablespoons. If you put them in a hot pan, they sort of explode because they're wet. Now, that would not be much fun now, would it? No. So I'm going to pat this dry. You want to put some oil in there. Yes. A couple, couple tablespoons. OK. And we're going to put this in a cold pan. We dry them so they don't pop. And we start them in a cold pan so we don't wear them. They're so we're going to start with those guys. All right, so um, now can I turn on the heat? Yes, you can. It's the left one right here. OK. OK. Medium heat. All right. And uh, you can keep an eye on them. We'll stir them, and I'm going to season the chicken. And while it's happening, I'm going to tell you that when I started on TV many, many years ago, of course, when I was just 12, well, that's not possible because <laughs> Sammy was five. But at any rate, Sammy was on the show a lot. What do you remember? Yeah, I remember when I thought I was a comedian and thought I was quite funny, and I remember trying to get a joke across. I was obsessed with uh, the meatball crossing the street joke. Of course, the family favorite. You, you made it up. Psh, yeah, I did. You made it up. I Are didn't... you kidding? Well, yeah. You popped it on me. That was the first. Do you uh, remember how it went? Um, something like, uh, why'd the meatball try and cross the road to get to the field of spaghetti? You're not supposed to give the punchline that quickly. Oh! Just, <laughs> to well, get yeah. to the field of spaghetti! Okay, I'm sorry. But well, anyway, what happened was, so Sammy said, you know, he's down here, he's like, Mom, I want to tell a joke. And um, my producer, who's in my ear in the control room, is like, no! <laughs> and the good news about live TV, it was live TV, is you can do anything you want. So I said, Go ahead, Sam. What do you want to tell me? <laughs> and at any rate, then he told his very silly joke, and it was a lot of fun, right? Oh, it was a great time. That was a lot of fun. The other instance that I remember was when you had uh, the New York Giants on. <laughs> and I was too young to know how cool they were and all this stuff. <laughs> I think those guys had to do the show sitting down with me. Yeah, I mean, what? You would have to have a step stool for your mouth or something. Right. All right, so when those, those are going to get a little bit crispy, and what you're going to do is mm -hmm. actually put them right back on this dish okay. with the slotted spoon. But we'll wait till they look a little crispy. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, I'm going to flour the chicken. So this is instantized flour, oh, okay. which is gravy flour, but it also um, really gives a nice crust on the outside of the chicken. We're just browning these on both sides. Yeah. And then uh, they only take a few minutes. And yeah. I'm going to go get the lemon and the shallots. Looks great. Yeah. So you keep an eyeball on this. Well, you taught me not to touch them so they get nice and brown. So I'm going to give them a second and give them some air time. Right. So let me get our lemon and shallot. And you can slice it very thin, OK? And I'm going to see how we're doing. Yeah, that looks good. We don't want too much color on this. True, that looks great. That yeah. looks yummy. I just want a little more brown, get it tan, not burnt. OK. And a little nubbin for you. Yeah, it's the tasting nubbit. Yeah, the tasting one. OK, so now I'm going to chop up some shallot. 
go, quickly go grab so, a plate of sugar. I need about two tablespoons. Okay, ma'am. And I'm just going to get this shallot done. Okay. Now, the reason we're using shallots, I love shallots, it's very French again. It's because they're really sweet and they give a great depth of flavor. They get brown in the sauce. I think those guys can come out. Yes. Can I have the tongs, please? Yes. Okay, so here we go. There we go. So this is going to go in. There we go. And at this part is where I want to kind of scrape up all the brown stuff? Yeah. This will be very quick. And you know what? Then we're going to just dump the shallots in with the capers. OK. So those are beautifully browned. Yeah, quick. This is all going to come together afterwards. So we're going to have the salty capers and the acidic lemons and um, the wonderful sauce from the chicken. Nice. And it's sort of like a, a take on piccata. If you ever had, I never call, I don't use fancy names at home. OK, no, back on with more. Um, oil. A little more oil, about a tablespoon. Oh, okay. And then we can do this together because I want to get it on. Get now, it on. if I was going to be really Ooh. fancy, I would remove the seeds, but I, I'm going to be lazy instead. Good. Coat it well, though. Yep. Now, this just has to reduce and it caramelizes. So, do you remember anything else about the Food Network? I remember what? the cookie making show where we made the uh, gingerbread cookies, I think they were, yes. and we got to design them. And that was a lot of fun. I was able to get creative and artsy, even though I was not. So was Do good. you remember what you did? Uh, I think I made probably James Bond or something like that. I was quite obsessed with Mr. Bond I when I was I remember one Halloween, he was James Blonde. <sighs> Thanks, Ma. That's always good. <laughs> Let <laughs> the see? world know. Okay, so see what we're doing. We're getting this nice color on here. Wow, that looks great. Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, I'm going to get it off because yeah, it's, it's smoking. It's... Anytime things start smoking that much, yeah, you gotta give it we some want time. this kind of color on the lemons, but we don't want a burnt pan. No. Okay, I'm just going to get this guy over. Okay. Run away from him. And let me get my spatula. We're just about ready to finish this. Yeah, that looks great. Now, here's the great thing about sautés, like this kind of dish or the pork dish we did a minute ago, is that they take no time at all. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, so these are going to, I'm just going to put them on top of the chicken. Yeah, that looks good. Here, yeah. I'll help you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty? And this also gets sort of an A-plus in visuals, so I'd say. Definitely does. Whatever you do, don't touch that, because it's caramel. Um, all right. OK, what? watch out. Here goes. Stand back. Whippa. Whippa. OK. There you go. And I'll use this to get the rest of the little brown bits up. Yes, do that, please. Now, when you make this recipe, you should follow the recipe <laughs> where you do the lemons first and then the shallots. But as we say, there's very little you can't fix when you're exactly. cooking. So you never apologize, never explain. We're going to bring this up to a boil. Is that a Juliaism or your mom? That's a Juliaism. OK. Never apologize, never explain. There we go. That sounds good. So like if it's a souffle and it falls, you just say it's a pudding cake. Woo! Right. It's all about the phrasing of it it's all. It's the phrasing. It's the positioning. Right, because everybody's so happy you cooked and they didn't. Okay, I think we can put everything in. Gently slide in the chicken, then I'll put in the shallots. You spread it around. You know the routine. There we go. Get all the deliciousness on. Oh. Yeah, and you keep turning it. I'm going to get some butter. Right, so let's put a few tablespoons yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, give you some room to plop them in. I'll just let it. This looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting quite We're hungry. just letting the chicken finish cooking a little bit in the sauce. Basically, it was done to begin with, right, Sammy? Yeah. OK, so let's set ourselves up. Uh, are you hungry? So hungry. You've eaten the broccoli and the quinoa, too, right? Yes. All right. Thank you, Ma. Let's see. There we go. Yum, yum. We're going to go sit outside. Sounds good. A little more sauce, right? It's all about more, the sauce. All about the sauce. We eat the lemons, too. Isn't that fun? Yeah, it's great. All right, so I'm just going to set up another plate, and I'll meet you outside. Sounds good, Ma. All right. All right. Another great meal cooked by the Sammy Mommy team. Squad. Thank you so much. So I'm interested if this beats your pork dish. You have to tell me. And okay. you have to take a little bite of the lemon, too. Of course. And the caper. I know normally you're not a big fan of capers. Hey, anything you make, you know I'm going to have a mm. taste. Mm. 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 All right. Boy, mm. that's awfully good if I do say so myself. Wow. Thank you so much for joining me today. And Sammy, thank you for cooking with me. Mm. I hope you try these quick, simple sautés at home. They're just the best. I'm Sarah Moulton. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time for some more of Sarah's Weeknight Meals.
What do you think? Psh, winning. I like the lemon, I like the tapers. Not too this, chewy. And I know this is a huge surprise. Love the sauce. Oh, we could even have more, right? We should make double sauce. More Don't sauce, better sauce. More sauce. I think always more sauce. So do you remember the recipe that you invented on the Food Network? Oh, no. What, what was Well, it? remember you had this brilliant idea for chocolate pizza? I remember I had an idea for a pizza with chocolate chips on it. I didn't have an idea for For chocolate it. pizza. Well, at any rate, I thought that was, that was right up there with the meatball joke. I thought, you know, oh, my son is five. He's so smart. Wow. <laughs> Sarah's weeknight meals continues online. For recipes, helpful tips, messages, and lots more, visit us on the web at sarahmoulton.com forward slash weeknight meals. And go to our YouTube channel, Sarah's Weeknight Meals TV. Funding provided by... Subaru builds vehicles like the versatile Subaru Forester with symmetrical all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo room. A recipe made for whatever the day brings. Subaru, a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Family owned and Indiana grown, Maple Leaf Farms is a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Providing a variety of duck products for home kitchens, Maple Leaf Farms duck helps inspire culinary adventures everywhere. Maple Leaf Farms. And thanks to the generous support of 